Yeah, that's right. Kelvin's a bad mother dude in his leather jacket. Hey, rap bags. Today, I'm going to show you how to get the rope gun. You're going to need it if you want to get the shovel. And you do need the rebreather. I've shown you already how to get the rebreather. So let's focus on this. It's one of the toughest caves in Sons of the Forest. I'm going to guide you through. Step one, before you go into the cave, where I'm going to show you location, you can also go and get the stun baton. And this is fantastic for dealing with the creepies, especially fingers. So we're pretty close to the cave entrance where we need to go. And obviously this is where you pick the baton. It's right by a stream next to the entrance. In fact, we're super close to the 3D printer bunker location. So a great place to save and then come to this cave. Hopefully you've got a few batteries to help you. You simply hold the attack button and it will do a special charge. Otherwise you can just use it as a reinforced stick to batter enemies. It can also block as well. So it's a good all rounder. Inside the usual story, you've got lots of dead bodies and maybe some resources. So search carefully along the floor. You will need a tarpaulin because you are going to have to do some manual save yourself. There aren't any actual save points in the rest of this cave, but you can go ahead and place your own. A good light source would be good. I apologize. I am going to do most of this with the torch as you are going to need a weapon pretty much at all times. Torch light would obviously be the main one to use. But in the very first instances, I thought I'd try and show a little bit more of the cave as we walk through. You'll see plenty of skeletons, keep going down, and there's definitely a few cuts ways that you're gonna have to go. But again, it's not the most complicated route. There are just some big chasms that are really dark, and there's a whole ton of creepies. Grab the rope here on the ledge, and then keep going downwards. There should be three to four normal mutants in here. Like I said, one prod will stun them good enough, and then a good few hits will take them down. I am playing this on slightly lower enemy health, so it may still be a little bit more challenging, but even on low health, it's still pretty formidable getting through. You definitely want to get as much of the creepy armor on as possible. So could you skip all the way through this? Maybe, but there are definitely some challenges and you are going to need to fight a sluggy, but it's pretty easy. But you really do want to be farming these guys up so you can get the creepy armor. So we see these two dudes. This is where we're going to actually have to go to progress deeper in the cave, but let's loot the rest of it. Head over across the way to where the lights are shining just above and you should see on one of these rocks some resources, painkillers and food. And then simply keep going along past the light with the cross shining on it, picking up more of the wire, slugs and that cross could come in handy for later. Once looted, head over to the dead body on the ladder. You'll hug the right hand side as a little stream going along and this is where you're going to come across your very first sluggy but don't panic it looks like eventually for me at least he got stuck and i was able to blow him up or maybe he's always meant to be this way it did seem a bit odd maybe it's just to teach us that there are some dangerous enemies around right by the dead body next to the entrance there should be some c4 so you don't even have to make or waste your own i foolishly chucked some molotovs at him so for sure, save your explosives or molotovs for later on. Use the ones that are on the floor just next to him. Either way, whatever you use, you've got to kill him to actually gain access to the rest of the caves. Obviously grab the time bombs if you used your own and then head straight through. There's nothing to pick up, maybe because you blew him up, I'm not too sure. Maybe you'd be able to get some skin off him if you did actually manage to kill him. But you will find a bunch of arms and legs Obviously that's what Slug is made out of that helps him crawl along. I wasn't even really that hungry, but sometimes you just want that nice taste. Let's keep going through into the next room and you'll see more lights and this way you can come across even more mutants as well as a fingers. If you're in multiplayer, there is a good chance you could probably stealth and time your attacks accordingly to take out both of these at the same time. So there's usually three in here, so make sure you take them all out and then go ahead and loot near some of the other workman bodies for some vodka and more painkillers. Also, I'll grab some rope here too, and even more vodka. You do get a food bag and a memo telling these guys to come down here and light it up as it was simply too dark. I was interrupted by fingers. As I said, the stun baton works great. Also the stun gun, which I've already done a guide for too. And you should go and watch that as that will give you the location for the stun gun and rebreather. And you'll need the stun gun, rebreather and the rope gun if you want to get the shovel. Not much other loot except just one more fingers to deal with. Again, you could argue you could run past these guys. Although if you run too far, you are going to have to deal with your very first set of twins maybe. Get a nice hieroglyphic. Still trying to work out what this actually means. I've been through quite a lot of caves and I have to say I wasn't paying close enough attention to see if there was any walls that could be exploded. 
So I'd seen the twins scuttling around. Remember, they can crawl on the sides of the caves. If you don't see them on the floor, they may be above you. I got ready with a Molotov, but it wasn't long before they scuttled out and I took one hit. So you can use the stun gun on these guys as well, but I didn't feel it was as effective as some of the other stuff. It didn't seem to slow down or stop as long when you use it on the fingers. In the end, I pounded it on with the actual stun stick itself. Keep pressing forward and you come across some bubbers. There's actually quite a lot of these. And remember, if you're playing on the hard mode, it only takes like one, maybe even two hits from these guys. And that's it, you're going to be down. So you may need to take them out with a little bit more explosive firepower or certainly some range. Some extra consumable loot and another laptop. And then keep pressing forward. It's a large, wide cavern, but it pretty much leads only to one spot. You'll eventually come through to quite a low corridor and low ceiling with another little stream running along so you can wash off any blood here by looking down and splashing about a bit. Hug the left hand side of the wall and you'll come across some crates where you can get some rope and stuff. Pushing forward you'll come across this giant chasm that's filled with just absolute darkness. Take out three maybe mutants as well as another fingers in here. This might be somewhere where you might want to have saved just before or maybe just after depending on how well you've been doing and how much armor you've been taking or losing. So yeah, a good spot I would say to set up camp. So another mutant to deal with, as I said there should be at least three in here, plus that fingers. They do pack a punch, but you can pretty much get a few hits in and then back away before he does his roundhouse. And then just keep going to the light and you'll notice one more fingers blocking the way. I know I'm making this look easy, as I said for guide purposes I'm just running through these caves to show you the locations. So please don't underestimate how hard this might be if you've got it on normal mode or hard mode. I was expecting maybe something to be on them skeletons but I couldn't see anything to actually pick. You'll carry up a long narrow corridor and eventually get to even more babies. It is a ridiculously long corridor, you'll get to a fork and you do need to go left to progress. But go up the right hand side first. I ended up doing this later on as I realised there was something I'd missed. Just some extra resources as well as an article talking about the missing billionaire. If you peer through the stagger lights you can also see the zip line rope that we'll have to go through and that will take us towards the exit. So head back down the slope, stick with the walls on the right until we go past the skulls and the blood on the floor and eventually you're going to come into another chamber which has got water and tons of babies in it. Just after you crouch when you come through here after feeding the first lot of babies and before you go deeper into the pools with more babies make sure you go up to the left hand side here and get the extra loot. There should be a carbon fibre arrow and some more circuit boards and stuff. And simply go back down and go into the water where like I said there's a few babies hanging around. Again it's quite a large area with lots of pillars to run around to recoup your health or whatever as you're trying to get rid of the babies and then just keep going along and you should eventually start going uphill a little bit more and you should see another light. Now that light is actually pointing to a little way that you can jump amongst the stag lights where you can kind of creep around the side of this fingers that is guarding. But as I was feeling pretty OP at the moment, obviously with all my armour and on an easier setting, I went to town. You can see how much armour damage I've taken though, so that is pretty formidable how much you will definitely need to get through. I only had two left and I didn't really re-up too many times. You'll see the light where we've got to go, but I actually turn around and there should be a small little alcove that you can go into. And this is where you can creep around from if you've jumped from the stag lights into here. There's not much here on the left hand side. And if you turn around and keep going down this side, then you'll end up just where the stay lights are. So like I said, it's a good way you can maybe try and sneak around or if you want to lose sight of any of the monsters. Just trying to be far away here, but here we go. We're at the light now. We've picked up the rope gun. Also obviously grab more of the ammunition for the 9mm and down there, there will be two twins. It's well worth sending a few flares just to spot them and maybe take them out if you've got ranged weapons. You see, I knew I'd missed something as I saw the light coming through the stag lights on the right hand side. All said and done though, you can go and use the zip line and just get out of the cave. You don't really need to fight them. I couldn't seem to find any loot really worth getting while I took them out. You don't get any extra pieces either for defeating them and taking the armour. And you're pretty much done. Head up hill and you'll eventually come out into a small crevice a little distance away from the main entrance. 
He was really unlucky to have found this place first. You probably ran into them, guys got killed or murdered or wondered how you could ever get up there without actually having the zip line. But now you've got the gun, I do believe you should be able to go up and down them. And that's pretty much stage two of getting the shovel. I've already shown you guys, as I mentioned again, that I've got you the rebreather. You'll find the link to that video in the comments section. And that's it. I'm now going to work on getting that shovel and showing you shovel locations that you should be digging first. Until next time, wrap bags, laters.